Hey, welcome back. This is it. Today I'm going to show you different techniques to instantly remove sharpening halos in Photoshop. As always, before we dive into the techniques, let's try and understand how Photoshop handles sharpening and why does it produce these halos. And for advanced users who already know the logic behind digital sharpening, you can skip ahead to the techniques section using the timestamps in the description below. So, every digital image is made up of a grid of millions of pixels or megapixels and each pixel is nothing but a rectangular box that holds only one color at a time which is defined by its RGB values. You can learn more about pixel and color depth in this video linked above. Now, a sharp image is where there is an abrupt or absolutely acute transition between edge pixels of foreground and background of the image. Like in this example, the final edge pixel of this black object has the same color, that is black, and the beginning edge pixel of this white object has white color. Since none of these edge pixels are overlapping or blending into transitional gray colored pixels, you can say that this edge is dark sharp. Now have a look as I zoom out. Notice that the letter S also appears to be sharp, since the edge pixel of the letter S is pure black and it doesn't blend with the surrounding white edge pixels of the white background. But do you notice the problem here? Yes, the edges are jagged. And why do you think the S looks jagged when the T is tack sharp? This is because the letter S is a rounded curve created entirely of square pixels. And that's why for digital images which contains all kinds of curves and shapes, too much sharpening is not a desirable look. So we have to make sure the edges not only look sharp, but also are smooth, otherwise it may appear over sharpened. And as for texts like these, in order to smooth the over sharpened jagged edges, Photoshop lets you add different anti-aliasing filters, which is what this AA stands for. In other words, it is simply adding a tiny bit of blur only to the edge pixels so they appear smooth. When you're zoomed in so close while viewing an image, you can't really know for sure if it is sharp because we only see the edge pixels blending to create grey pixels. But when zoomed to 100% or actual pixels, they will look perfectly sharp. So sharpness can truly be judged at actual 100 pixel view of the image. And you can view actual pixels by either double clicking on the zoom tool or using the shortcut Ctrl or Command 1. Or with the zoom tool selected, click on 100%. Also, for this very reason, sharpness should always be applied at the end of the retouching for a particular file size or pixel dimension. Because if you later resize images for the web, you are changing the pixel dimensions by reducing the number of pixels back per inch of the image. But remember that the size of an actual pixel always remains the same. So the sharpening thickness appears to shrink or even vanish after resizing. Now, a completely blurred image on the other hand, has a fuzzy, undefined color transition between the foreground and the background edge pixels. So, if I add a blur filter like Gaussian blur, the edge transitions become softer, and when zoomed in more, it now has a pixelated grayish gradient instead of defined black and white edge pixels. Now watch what happens if I create a curves adjustment to add contrast, which if you remember from the curves video, is nothing but making the brights brighter and the darks darker. And just like that, I have a sharp edge. Why? Because the edges that have more contrast appear to be more defined to the human eye. So basically, what I have done here is created an illusion of sharpness by simply increasing the contrast around the edges. And this is exactly what Photoshop does in order to sharpen a blurred image. The sharpening filters make the edges appear more defined by darkening the darker pixels and brightening the brighter pixels. So, in this case, the dark grey pixels were darkened to black and the light grey pixels were brightened to white. So Photoshop doesn't really create details that don't already exist in the image. Now while the sharpness illusion might work better with pure black and white graphics or text, with grayscale or color images, it brings all kind of artifacts. Let me show you. So if I were to undo all this and turn the text into color and choose another color for the background and merge it all up to a new layer, and blur it once again and finally duplicate this layer and go to filter, sharpen and use the classic unsharp mask filter. As you can see in the preview, it starts to create an illusion of sharpness by increasing the contrast around the edges. So the amount here is the strength of the sharpening or as you've just seen, it's the intensity of the contrast that is applied to the edges. The radius lets you define how thick you want the edges to be on which the contrast will be applied. 
and the threshold slider lets us determine the edges based on the brightness levels of the image and then masks out the sharpening effect from rest of the areas. In other words, it creates an unsharp mask and hence the name of this filter. But this high contrast results in color shifts and light fringes, also known as the halo effect around the edges. And if you look closely, what the radius slider is actually doing is controlling the size of the halo. And the amount is nothing but the intensity of the halo. So now that you understand how Photoshop sharpens, let's move on to the main tutorial. So the techniques I'm going to show you to remove these artifacts are based on one concept called luminosity masking, which I've explained in details in this video linked above. Now before sharpening, always remember to sharpen at the end and on a separate layer. So if you already have many adjustment layers made, you can merge it all up to a new layer using the shortcut Ctrl Alt Shift E on Windows or Command Option Shift E on a Mac. But for this example, I'll just create a layer copy and convert it to a smart object. So a smart object will always allow us to go back and readjust the parameters of the sharpening. Now I'll go to filter, sharpen and choose smart sharpen. But you can also use unsharp mask as well. Smart sharpen is a relatively new filter compared to unsharp mask. But unlike threshold in unsharp mask which excludes sharpening from noisy areas. Here we have the reduce noise slider which lets us reduce the sharpening noise. So instead of masking the sharpening noise, we can reduce the sharpening noise. So it's a slightly different algorithm. Smart Sharpen also has tools to reduce the halo intensity in highlights and shadows. But it doesn't really work well so we won't use that and instead use the techniques I'm about to show you. Now to remove the color shifts, I'm simply going to change the blend mode of this layer to luminosity. Which means only the luminosity of the layer will be affected and not the color. And just like that, you can see the color shifts are gone. And all we are left is with the nasty halos. And what exactly are these bright and dark halos? They are nothing but very bright pixels and very dark pixels, right? So to remove the halos, we simply need to mask out the very bright and the very dark pixels from the sharpening layer. So let's take a look at how to instantly get rid of these halos. The first technique I'm going to show you is by using color range, which I've covered in details in the luminosity masking video linked above. So make sure to check that out to really understand this technique. Now let's go to select and click color range. And I'll select the highlights because I want to select the bright halos. Right now I have the preview set to grayscale and the white areas are the areas that are going to be selected. You can also choose the quick mask preview but I prefer the grayscale as it looks like a black and white layer mask. So the first thing I'll do is reduce the fuzziness to zero. Now looking at the preview, I'll increase the range all the way towards the brightest highlights till I get the halo selected. And now increase the fuzziness slightly to soften the selection. When you click OK, you get this luminosity selection. Now let's convert this to a mask. So I'll go to the smart filter layer which already has a white mask which means the effect of sharpening is visible on the entire layer below. And the selection I have made is of the brightest halos. So in order to mask out the halos, I'll first click on the mask and then fill black in the selection. Now since our selection is so faint, when you fill black, it gets feathered. So you have to fill black a few more times. But I can't really see what is happening because these marching ants are covering up our fine selection. So here is a shortcut to simply hide these marching ants. All you need to do is press Ctrl or Command H and just like that, the marching ants are invisible. So if I fill black again in the selection, which is still active by the way, I can see if the edges are properly masked or not. And when you're done, don't forget to press Ctrl or Command H again to make the marching ants visible. And then Ctrl or Command D to deselect it. So let's repeat this step for the black halos by going to color range. But first, always make sure that you select the layer icon back again. And then go to select and color range. Now I'm going to go to the shadows since I'm going to select the black halos. And pinpoint the darkest shadows using the range slider. And adjust the fuzziness to feather the selection very slightly. And then click OK. So now that we have got our selection, let's select the same mask back again and fill black in it. For the dark part of the halos, you need to usually fill black only once or twice to get rid of the dark halos. Because the white halos are the one that mainly stands out as an over sharpening artifact. In fact, research has been done on this topic that shows the bright halo is the one that usually bothers the viewers the most. So once I deselect this, there you can see it's already gone. I have a halo free sharpened image. 
So if I disable the layer mask by holding shift and clicking on the icon, you can see how the sharpening look with the nasty halos. And if I shift click the mask again, this is what you get after removing the halos. And this is the original unsharpened image and this is the sharpened with halo removal. Now, the second technique to remove halos is by using the layer blend if sliders, which I've also covered in details in the same luminosity masking video. So make sure to check out blend if as well to understand this technique. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this sharpening layer and turn off the visibility of the old one. Now in the new duplicate, I'll fill the mask with white. So it reveals the same sharpening adjustment made on the entire layer. So now the halos are back again. To access Blendif, you can either double click on the layer or the Pro Workflow X panel users can also access it from the scene mode of the panel. So now we want to hide the halos caused by the current sharpening layer. So we're going to use the top this layer sliders, which affects only the current active layer. Now to remove the dark halo first, I need to mask out the blacks, right? So if I move the shadow slider to the right, it will mask out the darkest shadows, removing the dark halo. And if I hold Alt or Option and break apart the slider, it will feather the mask and blend the luminosity. And I can do the same thing to remove the white halos. Just mask out or hide the brightest whites and then hold Alt or Option to feather the mask to blend the luminosity. And just like that, the halos are gone. While the blend if approach is simpler and pretty straightforward, you can't fine tune it for different areas as you could do with a layer mask. That brings us to the third technique using custom luminosity masking via the Pro Workflow X panel, which is kind of similar to the color range but faster and simpler. Have a look. Once again, I'm going to duplicate the sharpening layer and turn off the visibility of the old ones. Again, in the new duplicate, I'll fill the mask with white so it reveals the sharpening adjustment made on the entire layer. And the halos are back again. In the scene section of the panel, we have all the different luminosity masks for highlights, midtones, and shadows. So to select the bright halos, you need to simply click on one of the highlights and see the mask preview. If you don't see the white halo in the preview, simply cancel the mask and choose the other option. Usually it's the third or fourth one. Just like regular mask, the white areas in the preview are the ones that will be selected. So I'll go ahead and convert the mask preview into selection by clicking on load as selection button and then click on the mask of the sharpening smart filter layer and just like we did in the color range, fill black in the selection to hide the bright halos. Now let's zoom into the bright halos and press Ctrl or Command H to hide the selection. And just like before, we will fill in black quite a few times until we get rid of the bright halo. Now remember that the selection is still active but hidden, so press Ctrl or Command H to make it visible again. And then Ctrl or Command D to deselect it. Now we need to select the black halo and usually with all the images, it is the darkest black mask on the panel that does the trick. See? So let's load this as a selection and remember to always make sure that your layer mask thumbnail is selected. If not, you might think you're filling the selection with black but nothing will really happen. So with my layer mask thumbnail active, I'll use the shortcut Ctrl or Command H to hide the selection and fill the selection with black a couple of times until the dark halo is masked out slightly. Now let's unhide the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command H again and then deselect it. Now after I zoom out a bit and if I hold Shift and click on the layer mask, it will hide the masking and reveal the sharpening all over the image and you can see the halos. And I'll shift click once again to show you the effect of the mask to hide the halos. And this was before sharpening and this is after sharpening and masking out the halos. But we are not going to stop here. What I want is to make this sharpening create a three dimensional effect. To do this, I'm going to paint white in certain areas of interest in the image to have extreme sharpness. I always choose areas where texture needs to be enhanced further. This unmasks the sharpness only in those areas. But be careful not to paint over the edges or it will bring back the halo. And if you overdo a brush stroke, simply use the fade tool from the panel or go to edit and choose the fade brush tool. Now let's take a look at the before and after. So here we not only have eliminated the halos but also added a punch of sharpness in areas of interest. But again, you won't see much of a difference when you're completely zoomed out. 
But when you print or view an image in actual pixels, you will not only see the sharpening artifacts, but a much better dynamically sharpened image. So I hope this video gave you a better understanding of sharpening. And for the early birds who are watching this video in the first 48 hours since its release and made it so far till the end, here is a 50% discount coupon for you to purchase the Pro Workflow X panel if you're interested, which is already on a sale on the website. So use this code displayed on the screen during checkout. The website link is in the description below. Until next week, have fun retouching.